Thanks, guys. We'll open it up. You guys, whatever y'all want to talk about. Better make it quick, because I got to go. Coach, just something about the first uh, scrimmage uh, from the other day, just kind of what you're looking for this weekend. Yeah, I thought the first scrimmage was a really good uh, energy level, uh, intensity, uh, like intent to go prepare to scrimmage. It was not a lethargic, like, ho-hum. The players were, had good intentions, good energy. Sometimes it's, it's a different time start for the scrimmage than our typical practice times of 2.30, 3.30. So I always worry about us starting fast, having good energy. We had that. Um, we got a lot to work on, really sloppy in terms of uh, substitutions, uh, uh, getting guys on and off the field, uh, communication, um, signals, just a lot of new people in the organization, whether it's uh, players new, mid-years new, portal guys new, coaches new. It was not as clean as most of our um, first scrimmages. Um, some guys did well, some guys didn't do too well. Uh, a lot of anxiety for the mid-years. So, I mean, from scrimmage one to scrimmage two, starting really yesterday, but today we're, we're, we're moving towards how much can we improve from scrimmage one to scrimmage two. Usually see immense improvement in guys that just got here because they're not as nervous. It was their first practice in the stadium. So I'm hoping to see some of that growth this week and, and into Saturday. Curry, what did you make of the defensive line in that scrimmage and just what they've done to this point in the spring? Uh, I thought they did a really good job of having like energy enthusiasm. Uh, we, we, we affected the quarterback. Um, we had some, some disruptive sacks. Did not probably play the run as well as I'd like to. Uh, as, as high as my expectation is in terms of making goals of 3.3 or less per carry. Um, we've had much more dominant scrimmages from a defensive line than we had uh, uh, Saturday. We had some guys nicked up and banged up. Um, but I was I was pleased with the, the tenacity and the, the way both groups of line of scrimmages approached it. Yeah, NAL has obviously impacted recruiting across a number of fronts, but with the quarterback in, with the quarterback position in particular, how has that made recruiting a quarterback or identifying your quarterback more difficult? And how has your staff adjusted to dealing with the changes in NAL and how you go about finding who your quarterback prospects might be? I don't know if I fully understand the question. What? How does NIL tie to quarterback recruiting? Yeah, how has what? NIL impacted how you guys go about recruiting quarterbacks? I don't know that it's changed. I mean, we go about recruiting quarterbacks, by evaluating quarterbacks. You know, we watch them play high school. We bring them over here and uh, and have them throw for us. We watch their games, which is by far and away the most critical thing we can have. Um, but, I mean, it would probably be a bigger picture of why are we singling out quarterbacks because NIL has impacted the recruitment of every player in terms of where does that rank on their uh, scale. It's one of the first questions of, um, is that is that number one priority? Is that number two, three, four, five, six? And do you list it that way because um, you actually feel that way, or you just think it's the right answer? You know, it used to be, you know, every kid came in and said, "Well, the uh, most important thing to me is my education." Well, I don't know many universities you get a bad education at. You know, they don't, they don't hand out bad educations. So, is that truly what people were coming to school for 10, 15, 20 years ago? Um, is it truly what they're coming to school for now at NIL? So. I'm dancing around the question because I don't really understand why specifically it's about quarterbacks. Um, it hasn't, like our recruitment of quarterbacks or any position hasn't changed what we look at because of NIL. It might change what their motivating factor is, certainly, but not what we look for in terms of criteria. I want a, um, a self-starter. I want a guy that's committed to the program, that's selfless. Uh, I want all the same things, size, speed. I want all the same things. Um, it's more, be more selective over kids you pick and choose from that the NIL is not the uh, number one narrative. Kirby, what have you seen from Arian this spring as he's now the oldest, both in terms of time spent at Georgia and just pure age? Uh, good and bad. I think uh, we, we've made a concerted effort to spend more time on developing Arian. I think when he decided to come back, I, I told him, I said, look, I don't. I want there to be a purpose with you coming back. Like, what, where are the areas of growth? Um, we've done some things during special teams period. I think to, to he's been a really <coughs> dominant special teams player, um, and he knows that. He knows that that's he loves that. He embraces that. It's like where he made his first name is being a, a dominant special teams player. And so we've taken some of those times that he's 
invested four years in special teams work and we've allowed him to really grow us a wide out um, and I think it's helped him do that. Um, he's had some plays, I think he'd be the first to tell you he wish he had back, um, intermediate routes and deep routes and then he's had some some big plays too. So um, I'm, I'm pleased with where he is. I hope he keeps getting better and keeps growing and, 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 and trying to be an explosive playmaker for us. Kirby on the run defense two-parter, is it hard to evaluate the run defense for sure without some of the guys you don't have this spring? And also, is there any part of you that kind of just wonders if it's ever going to be the way it was when you had Jalen Carter, Jordan Davis, Monica White, all those guys here? Yeah, I'm not uh, I'm not down. I don't know where this is coming from. Maybe the narrative out there I don't know about. I have no idea what you guys are reading or saying or seeing. So I'm not down on, uh, on our run defense. We, we are not as good as we were that year, but we're better than we've been a lot of other years. So, I mean, there's, there's a scales of, of that uh, in terms of that. I, I wouldn't trade our group for any group in the country in terms of, of, of defensive line groups. And it's a, it's a collective whole. Um, we've got a group that can get the job done. Um, they're going against, you know, one of the best three or four offensive lines they'll go against all, all, all season each and every day. So iron sharpens iron and we're, we're getting better by who we go against. but. Um, I, I don't really do the comparison thing, so I'm not like going to compare them to to uh, Devonte Jordan and Jalen, who were you know all here at different times. So there was years with those three, and there was years that one of those three was here, and, and it's varied every year. So um, I'm pleased with where we are. We have to get better, um, and we have players on our defensive line that can get better. The worst feeling as a coach is when you don't have players that you can get better. And there's coaches all across the country right now on defense line that don't have one 300 pounder. You know, we've got several. We just got to continue to get them better and, and, and execute at a higher level. And it's not about them sometimes. It's about the guy behind them making sure he sticks his nose in the right place too. Kirby, after the scrimmage Saturday, can you give us your thoughts on uh, Gunnar Stockton, how he fared, and what's the status of Riley Moon? Uh, Gunnar's done a good job. I've seen growth in Gunnar. I thought he had a couple uh, stakes in the scrimmage, but he also played with much more consistent with consistency. I've have seen this progression with Gunner that like he's getting better each and every practice. You know the bowl practices were great for him. The get, ability to play in that bowl game was awesome for him. Uh, he's gotten better. He's getting a feel for our system. He's a really good athlete. He has every now and then a, you know a, a mistake that you can't have at that position. The good thing for him is you can ask him after the play, and I always ask him, what did you see? What was the coverage? He gives the right answer. So he's seen the right things, um, but he's got to continue to develop and grow, and uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's, that's a hard position to play. And um, he's still trying to master that uh, position. What was the other part? Ryan from Lizzie, status. Yeah, Ryan's dealing with a, a little bit of a, a, a knee injury. It's not a significant injury. He's had it before uh, since high school. It's been bothering him. Um, he's been able to throw. He, he hasn't been able to go out and, and be mobile and run, and his knee's been bothering him. So we're hopeful to get him back today. If not today, then probably Thursday. So he's, he's had to miss out on some reps um, because of that injury. But he's been into everything, all walkthroughs, all the mental stuff. Kirby, um, there was, some, I guess, stuff out there about scrimmage. I guess you mentioned Darian Smith made a play. Uh, Dylan Bell, I wasn't there. Could, could you highlight some of the guys, Rod Robinson, that are coming around at the skill position? There's obviously receivers to replace and your top two running backs. Well, I think it's – it's kind of, I kind of look at it like, what scrimmage have we had that, that skill player didn't make a play? And what scrimmage do we have that a defensive player didn't make a play? The issue is you guys may not know about it, you just hear about it. And then I guess a big deal's made. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't look at it that way. Arian had an explosive play, but we also had a bust on defense. So was it Arian or was it the defense? You know, um, Dylan Bell had a, had a had a great catch, but Dylan Bell's had great catches all over the place. You know, he, he it's, it's not. I don't know. I, I don't get into it like it's like these couple guys just blew it out of the water. Oh gosh, these expectations are so great. I look at it as the defense sometimes messed up. And we also had some sacks. Well, did we have sacks because we had great pass rushers or because the back didn't block the blitzer? Or, you know, we busted and, and, and slid the wrong way and cut a guy free. So 
you know, when, if a guy has a dominant performance, I'd be more than happy to mention it. Like he dominated, he beat every rep. But we didn't have anybody do that. There's nobody that had a dominant performance. Um, guys got lucky and fell into plays. And I, as coaches, we don't look at those and uh, and look at that as progress. Sometimes that's taking advantage of what's given to you. And we had a lot of uh, those opportunities uh, Saturdays. We had a lot of busts. Um, but there's nobody that I can say just, you know, even Rod. I, didn't, I thought Rod had a lot more yards left out there than he had. Um, we didn't have one explosive run the entire scrimmage. So if you don't have explosive runs, you're either not blocking downfield well or you're not making people miss. And, and that's kind of been an MO for us. You know, last year it was kind of the same way. Yeah, Kirby, you mentioned all the newcomers this spring. Dominic Lovett was obviously in that boat last spring. How much more comfortable do you feel like he is this spring? How is that going to help him going through the summer and into the fall where he can make an impact later on? Yeah, so far this spring, I would say Dom has had a, a very good spring. He's he's so much more confident in the offense. I think Carson has a lot of confidence in him. They're on the same wavelength, and there's been some uh, really uh, – like there's been days that Dom was really uh, – uh, like dominant out there. Now you got to say, is that because Taki and Bull aren't out there covering him, so he's making more plays, or is that just Dom's more comfortable in the offense and he's winning at a higher rate? He's he's had a good uh, good spring. We need it. He's got more confidence. He's playing with confidence, and uh, I think Carson really uh, feels comfortable with him. So I'm pleased with where he's at. His his physical toughness continues to improve. I mean, this time last year, it was constantly on him about what he was doing without the ball. He he makes a conscious effort to do better at that now, and we need him to. Harry, what kind of progress are you seeing with Carson and the wide receiver group in general? You know, having replaced a lot of guys that caught a lot of passes last year, how, how is the overall chemistry developing between this, this new set, for lack of a better term? It's a work in progress. It's not where it needs to be. I mean, I, I would say that you know, he, he's really he's, he's comfortable with the guys he's thrown to the most, and he's we're trying to force the issue with the guys he hasn't. Some of their reps come with the ones, some of their reps come with the twos. But um, right now, it's not just getting them comfortable with Carson, getting them comfortable with the offense. I mean, I, I put them where uh, Ra Ra and Dom were last year, and uh, Ra Ra and Dom this time last year were probably ahead of where those three guys are in terms of uh, growth and implementation into the offense. They got to continue to grow and get better. And um, as they do that, they'll get more opportunities with Carson. Yeah, Coach, you mentioned the offensive line, so they might be one of the better top three groups in the country. What, what are you seeing from that unit that makes you believe that they might be that great? And what are they kind of missing that they can improve on? Yeah, I can't put them that great because I haven't seen the other ones. I don't think that's a fair comparison. I think I'll leave that to the gurus um, that have all the, 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 the talk shows and all the, the media stuff. I can't I can't seriously say our group's the top three group in the country because I hadn't seen the others. Um, we have a very experienced group uh, outside of the center. We have a lot of guys who've taken snaps. But I ask you, because you've taken snaps, does that make you better uh, than other people? I, I certainly value experience, especially in our league. Um, but you know, you can go backwards, and uh, you have to be careful with, with guys that are older, because if you're not careful, they go backwards, and the, the younger guy beats them out. There hasn't been a year that we were here that a younger player hasn't surpassed an older player because they were hungrier and they were more driven and more motivated. I don't see that happening with our offensive line, but I can't, I can't rule it out. So uh, I love the the fact that they're they're a tight knit unit. They're really physical. They enjoy practice, they celebrate together, they eat together, um, and, and, and again, you you hang your run game and your protection of your quarterback on the offensive line, which we've been pretty consistent at. Yeah, uh, what have you seen out of Dylan Bell this spring and how he's continued to develop a wide receiver for you guys? Just that, he's continued to develop, continues to get better. He's still a work in progress. He played high school running back. Uh, he played you know, 25% running back last year, and. Um, the kids worked his tail off at uh, receiver to get better, but there's a lot of route running things he can get better at. Um, and the good thing is he's got a quarterback, the, the, the caliber of Carson, to utilize his strengths, you know, get him throws, get him 50-50 balls. And uh, I'm proud of the way he leads in practices. He's taken on a lot more of that Rosamie lad role of being the guy 
that's the workhorse in that group that never complains. He's really physical, practices hard, and sets a standard for the others. I think him, uh, Ra Ra, Ari, and Dom all have, have taken ownership of that. Kirby, when you look at Damon Wilson and the things that he can make a jump from in year one to year two, just what are those things and have you seen that this spring? Yeah, he's make, he's getting better. Have I seen the jump that I want to have? I, he's right where he needs to be and supposed to be. Um, he's not ahead of schedule and he's not behind. He's growing at a rate that, that I've seen a lot of outside backers, whether it was Nolan, Aziz, all these guys have come through here. He, he, he's gotten better each and every year. Um, he's improving his uh, run strength ability, his ability to hold up against big tackles and stop the run, uh, be violent and twitchy. Uh, he's always been a really good rusher, and he gives it extremely, uh, he gives great effort. Uh, and I'm proud of those things. He's got to become a more consistent first and second out player, which he's doing. He's, he's, get, he's a work in progress, and he's growing at that, and he's going to be able to help us this year. Be a two-part question on the offense with, with Kobe Young. What, what have you seen from him so far? What, why you wanted to add him? And uh, on the offensive line, left guard, right tackle, what's the competition look like there? Um, left guard, right tackle. I mean, the guard position I don't look at is left guard, right guard. We, we, we got a lot of guards competing in there. So when you start at guard, you start with uh, Micah, Dylan, um, and uh, Tate. Those three guys are, are really interchangeable parts. Uh, Daniel Calhoun's done a nice job working in there. So has Easley, so has Drew Bobo. Jerry can play there. They've all done a good job competing right there. Uh, right tackle, um, Trust, Monroe, uh, Merriweather, Bo's out. So Bo hasn't been able to go, but uh, a lot of guys, Michael's thrown out there some play. Dylan's jumped out there and gone. So, I mean, we just look at it as let's get our best five out there. And uh, the more guys we have above the line playing winning football, we've typically had anywhere from eight to 10 above that line. I hope we fall in that same area uh, at the outcome of this, this spring as well. Colby Young, um, he's splashed. He's had some, some really, really great spectacular plays. Uh, and then he's disappeared at times. So it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a learning curve. Like he doesn't have confidence and know the offense inside and out completely. So I don't think you can judge, you judge a skill set on one-on-ones when he goes against DBs. You don't really judge a skill set in a scrimmage right now because he's trying to figure everything out. And it's not from like a freshman standpoint, it's from a familiarity standpoint. And uh, I'm pleased with where he is. And he's really a hard worker and where he's shown up is on special teams. I mean, he's, he's shown a commitment to special teams that I didn't expect to see, which shows me his toughness level and his buy-in. Last question. Kirby, you know, in your ESPN interview, there was some, some uh, colorful comments, uh, really good interview, by the way. Uh, there was a quote on uh, Carson where he said that, let the cat go play. And you know, that maybe last year that, that Georgia maybe was a bit overprotective earlier. Maybe that was my takeaway. But I mean, could, could you elaborate on where Carson's at in terms of the freedom and, and how aggressive you think this offense will be within the season? Well, your offense can only be as aggressive as the players around you. It's not all on the quarterback. And uh, when I said that about let the cat go play, that really came more from Mike and the offensive staff uh, in terms of um, allowing him to, to play and play to his strengths. His strengths are his ability to, to navigate the pocket, to make throws, uh, to change plays, and to put us in the right play. That's his greatest strengths, and to use the weapons around him. Um, so I think he'll continue to do that. He's done that thus far. He makes you right a lot. Um, he's very hard to trick and confuse. And when you've got a player like that, as long as he has weapons around him, he can distribute the ball. And our offense has a lot of ways, which you guys have seen in the past. We have a large volume of uh, catchers, meaning it spreads out. We don't necessarily have one guy with you know 150, but we got a bunch of guys with a lot of touches. And the reason we can do that is, is the decision-making uh, that Carson has and the experience he has. So uh, I'm excited to, 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 to see him go play, keeping him healthy and protected is important, but also surrounding him with playmakers that can capitalize on his strengths will make us a better offense. Thanks, guys.